Okay, guys, welcome to Zoom to TVT with Charge and Hater. Tonight, we're honored to have Daniel Chun, GM of the Kim Chi Express. Daniel, what's up? What's going on? Excited to be on. Appreciate you guys. Okay, let's just get right into this. Uh, six career points in eight career minutes. Like, that's Kobe-like stats as an LA guy. Like, when you were playing, like, who covered you the best in this tournament? <sighs> I'd say who covered me the best? I'd say... Big wingspan, Gavin Edwards comes to play. Gavin <laughs> Edwards, uh, Team 23, he did, a, he did a decent enough job, kind of contested the shot, but you know what it is? It's, it's me getting the shot off, me having confidence, nailing that three-pointer. So that's all it is, six points in eight minutes, that's efficiency. Kobe really would go, I'd say, 30% from the field, 40%, but last time I checked, I was two for four. That's 50% from three, huge. Yeah, I, I think there was the issue with you guys finally uh, waiting a couple of years to get your first win. They, they just weren't utilizing you enough. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I should have played in the game a little bit more. Uh, the second year we played, oh, no, the third year we played in 2018, I was fresh off ankle surgery. Uh, I tore my ligament there, so I was a month in. But I've been telling them from day one, but it is what it is. Hey, so so moving on to that GM role. So um, obviously you got a, a real storied history here with uh, uh, the D, the TBT. Um, you know, we talked about your your playing career. Um, I, I know you've interned with them, and um, obviously uh, the GM of one of the most popular teams in the TBT. So give us a little background on how you got involved uh, with the TBT from the beginning to where you got to now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd say 2015 summer, I was at USC going into my senior year um, of college. And I fell upon an ESPN article that had like Brian Scalabrini, Jason Williams, Mike Bibby playing in a tournament for, at that time, that was a million dollars. Um, and I was interested right off the bat. I was like, hey, I sent an email. Like, hey, I could help you guys out because I haven't heard of it. Um, I don't think West Coast, there wasn't really that much traction going on. So I can just, whatever you guys need me to do, I'll help out. Um, so I did, did a little couple projects for them. Um, and that year, that summer, you know, went out there to Cal State LA. They went ahead and uh, did the tournaments. I did like social, like social media for them, kind of just basically recorded a bunch of videos. Um, it's funny because I, I saw one of the first games that I saw was, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, is the Pistol Shrimps, a team. I don't know if you guys know, Pistol Shrimps. It was a, like an all-girls team with one dude, and they were playing against LA Unified. And so uh, I remember vividly Ike Diagu, who was on LA Unified, was on the right wing, nailed, nailed six straight three-pointers back to back, like in a row in succession. Crazy. So um, I saw that, I saw the level of competition at the time, I think TBT was trying to get their brand and figure out where they were at in the space. And so um, got that inspiration. And the next year was like, hey, you know, you gotta get a bunch of votes to get in this thing. We've always tossed around the idea. Me and my friends uh, from high school, we're all always like, what would it be like to play against the pros, right? You know, we play 24 ball, we play rec leagues, we play in the park. But what would it look like, right? Um, so that's what we did. We made a team, got the votes, um, and the rest is history, really. Yeah, you talk about getting the votes, too. And it's always interesting because a lot of teams have an identity of how they do social media, the attitude. A lot of the alumni teams have the built-in fan bases. A lot of the cause teams yeah. have a certain cause they're playing for. And you guys were always sort of the quirky team that everybody's like, hey, this is the one we want to follow. What the hell is a Kimchi Express? Can you talk a little bit about how a bunch of guys from high school went from a branded kind of fun team going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the pros to how it's evolved into recruiting actual pros to play on, on your banner? Yeah, good question. Um, so, you know, we started out, like I said, with uh, high school friends. Um, shout out Fullerton, California. Shout out Sunny Hills High School big Asian population. Um, and so a bunch of my friends being an Asian, most notably Korean, you know, I'm all about Korean representation and just making sure like, you know, what I love about sports is that it unifies a lot of cultures, right? Um, it doesn't, you know, I don't care if you're white, black, purple, don't matter. Uh, we roll out a ball, you know, we can find common ground within sports. And so um, I want to use that as a platform to go ahead and, and reach out and, and, you know, express like, hey, here's a, Here's the Korean culture, Here's, here are different things. And so that's how we really started. Um, and the voting process is funny because, you know, we don't, like you said, we don't have an alumni base. We're not uh, attached to like Memphis alumni or Ohio State alumni, right? Big alumni bases. Uh, for us, we just got a bunch of friends on Facebook around the, around the area, Orange County, LA County. Um, 
and this is what we did. Like we, I came back from my full-time job, come down at night, call the friends over to my house and be like, Hey, we're going to have a voting party. And so we did that multiple times. We ordered whatever, Jack in the box, McDonald's, plop a couple sandwiches on the middle of the table. We bust out our laptops and we're like, bop, 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 bop. Hey, message. Hey, this is, Hey, I got this guy. I got David Kim. No, I got David Lee. I got John Kim, right? You got a bunch of Kims and Lees. Uh, so I missed, I missed, uh, you know what kind of that I miss right now is actually TBT doesn't, uh, they don't show the fans that have voted for your team now, just because, you know, fan voting is, has kind of gone down in priority for them. Uh, but it was funny because, you know, previously there was a list of, of fans that voted for your team, right? You've got their first name and last initial. And it's hilarious. And I've got a great stories of uh, sometimes, you know, we'd be, we'd be cranking out votes. Like we'd have voting parties till 3 a.m. Um, and cranking out 200 votes in a night, right? Uh, and we will shock the TBT world the next morning and be like, how the hell did Kimchi Express get all these votes for no reason, right? People thought we were cheating, cheating the system, doing something, but it was all organic on, on Facebook Messenger, all our friends, people that we've talked to for two seconds, people that we've talked to for years, right? Um, and so, yeah, no, it was fun. And uh, a few of my friends, you know, like we've got one guy, uh, it's funny because Ted, he was on the team for a couple of years. He would say like, we get a, we get a vote in, it would be like David K. And you know, it was, it was fun to be like, we claim our votes. Like, Hey, I got David K. Hey, I got JL. Right. Um, and it, and a name would pop up David K. It would be like, all right, who got that one? And it'd be silent for a little bit. And then he would claim it. He's like, Hey, I got David K. I'm like, Oh, you did not man. I tested you, bro. That was me. So <laughs> it's just funny. Um, fun stories like that. Like that was all the fun of it. And then floating into now, recruiting professionals, really what we wanted to do, uh, the, the spirit behind that was um, the first two years was f friends voting, getting teams out there. Um, but we realized we had a platform. As TBT grew, we grew. Um, and what good is it for us to use these votes to just throw out a trash team and get smacked up for a little bit for free jerseys and some ESPN time? Uh, so we want to leverage that opportunity for people to play uh, that play overseas that want to play back at home in front of their friends and family um, and even just showcase their skills and their talents to maybe even level up to, you know, a, a higher overseas league or somewhere and get scouted or stuff like that. Right. And so we had that opportunity that really clicked for us and that um, got us to where we're at right now. So we've, we've recruited and DM a bunch of players. Um, it's been a challenge, but it's been fun really. You know, that's excellent. I, I'm kind of backtracking a hair about your fan base. I've just got vivid memories of watching you guys uh, play back there. I don't know if it was on Facebook Live back then uh -huh. or, you know, what channel it was on, but uh, you and uh, on the bench and your friends uh, behind you signed just going absolutely crazy. So that was, uh, that was just really fun and, and awesome to see, and I think that's what uh, uh, everyone really loves about the, the, the kimchi team. Um, so a little bit more into recruiting. Um, you said you just started DMing people. So um, did, did you have any leads of professionals that you knew or was it, is it truly DMs and cold calling and now you're starting to form this team that got their first win in the play in game and obviously looking to build on it this year? Yeah. I mean, from where we started really like the voting is, is where you guys saw our hard work and how that's really coming into fruition. We took that same mentality into recruiting. I don't have any contacts. I don't know anyone in the NBA, G League, overseas, anything like that. Uh, but what we did do is provide an opportunity and, um, you know, package that into something that's, that's attractive to people, right? Attracted the players. Like I said, playing back at home, playing for 2 million, playing, um, you know, on ESPN. Like, you know, back in the college days, you know, they were on there. But now, you know, playing overseas, they don't really get that coverage. So uh, it, was, it was really that and selling that. And, it's a numbers game down to the point of it. Like it's a numbers game, as many DMs as you can, you got to, you know, throw out there. And, and once you get a couple and get a few going, then it, it'll be good. So it really, it's, um, it's not only just me, you know, I'm, I'm the GM, the general manager, but I mean, it's, I've got a whole host of friends that have really supported and everyone that have voted really it's, you know, Kimchi Express wouldn't be here without the people that have supported the fans. So shout out to all of them. Like really, um, and, and it's, it's been a wrap from there, really.
Yeah, I mean, it's got to be great to have such a passionate fan base. I mean, it's, it's one of the more interesting stories. And it's funny because, like, it's allowed you to actually really grow into a, a, a robust team. So, look at this roster. You've got four guys signed. And we'll let, uh, we'll let Charge talk Trey because, you know, he's a former Charge alum. But yeah, you yeah. got Marquez Coleman out of Nevada, who currently plays in Portugal. you got Will Davis, mm-hmm. a bruising forward out of UC Irvine in Romania, mm-hmm. with G League experience. Jordan Loveridge, Utah alum. Another big, another wing. You've got some really, really talented players. So, you've grown from a guy who – I mean, they may not match your Kobe level of efficiency, the two for four, but I mean, like, you've got some legit European pros that could make a run. Like, how, how has that changed how you're able to recruit even better players to stack up with them? Yeah, I mean, it just proves, proves that, you know, we have the ability to field a great team. Um, I think what we, what we kind of separate from is, you know, you know, the alumni, t- alumni teams are great. Uh, they have their bases, but it, kind of constricts yourself right um you know we've our first year of doing you know recruiting pros and getting them out there in 2018 it, it was a great experience I think we've got so there's nine nine players registered on roster me being one of them so you've really got actually eight players um but you know it, it was it was a challenge because we finally got to realize the you know the game that is played sometimes in just terms of recruiting you know there's a few different games right there's there's voting at that time. That's huge. That's, I'd say, a, a majority of the game to get into TPT is just getting into TPT and then getting the players and then getting them to actually show up, right? There's a lot of different phases of TPT. And so from there, it really um, got us to, to gain a base, to gain, um, you know, just notoriety and just, just buzz around, around, the, uh, around the community and basketball. And so what we want to do really is provide an opportunity again to play in TBT, but also just upgrade, you know, your brand image, um, really just providing content, uh, anything that the players need. Like I, I want to, I want to help them in whatever I can do to get them to whatever next level or add content or build their brand. Really. That's, that's what we're trying to aim to do. And then with that, of course, um, you know, introduce them to Korean culture, Korean barbecue, kimchi, like it's all, it's all both uh, benefits both ways, man. It's got to be part of the contracts. You yes, sir. Find your will and sign up for kimchi. It's a must. And... It's a well, must. Everyone needs yeah. to try kimchi, man. Excellent. Hey, um, as Andrew said, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, Trey Davis. Um, you know, I, I got real excited when I saw your tweet this afternoon. He, he came through to charge uh, for a minute. And, and this is one of these uh, kind of classic players that I think is just a really good fit for the TBT that may not be a household name um, playing yeah. for uh, currently the main Red Claws. He has mm-hmm. their franchise record for 57 points in a game at 10 threes at night. And what people don't know is two out of the last three years, he had the highest game this past season. He had 43 for him. So this is a guy that's just getting buckets and really killing it in the uh, the G League. He's a good facilitator, plays great D. So how did you – obviously, you, you fall in love with some of the stats, but um, how did you get in contact with Trey and get him committed to um, um, Kimchi Express? Well, the bulk of our recruiting strategy is something that we learned back in 2018 before, you know, Corona and all of this is – recruiting players that are around the area, uh, around the region that we're trying to get into, right? And so um, our focus was players in California, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, West Coast, um, you know, Washington, Oregon, wherever, just so that we can, you know, we're not telling people to fly out from New York or, you know, the East Coast to, to add layers of complexity to getting them to the actual game. So, um, that's what we did. Uh, you know, last time I checked, you know, he, he lived in, in Dallas, Texas. And it's funny because we don't want to burn any bridges. And so we reached out to him actually um, a couple months ago and he said he might be interested. And uh, we, we did a second reach out just to people that are outside of our region just to let him know, like, hey, this is the situation right now. Uh, we might need to go in a different direction just because you know, number one, like we don't, we don't have the means right now to fly you out and get, and get you going. But number two, it's, it's really the coronavirus. Like you, you never know what is going to happen and how you, how are you going to have to get there? Planes are, are down, you know, any situation like that. And so uh, we, we sent another DM. He replied back, like, I'm actually in Phoenix. I'm going to be here for the summer. I was like, all right, bet. like, let's get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, got to talking to, with him and then got him on board. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Trey, dude, man, that guy, he's a certified bucket getter. Like, you can't have too many of those guys on your team. Uh, so, 
you know, something that I've learned in TBT, just watching and being a fan is, you know, you've got to, there, there, there are a couple things. Um, you got to have guys that just get buckets. And number two, you got to have great defense, uh, great, great front court players. And, and so that was, that's what we're trying to build our team off of. Um, but yeah, he definitely adds, adds a different element to the game. Just can do what he wants, right? Yeah, and uh, I'm sure uh, part of the team building is uh, kind of using people's networks, some of your existing players. So as we know, um, uh, Trey played with uh, Taco this year with the uh, main Red Claw. So what's Taco's status for TBT 2020? Taco fall status. That's a good question. Uh, you know, it's funny. Um, I don't want to name out any names, but there possibly might be an option of a Taco lookalike. <laughs> Who knows, man? I'm just saying. So that's I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave it there, and uh, we'll go. We'll, we'll we'll go next question. <laughs> <laughs> always political. Always political. I like it. So you mentioned you mentioned the whole coronavirus stuff, and it's interesting because like we've talked to a lot of GMs so far, and we're all kind of trying to prep this stuff, like guys trying to stay fresh, trying to stay loose about the use of gyms. About I mean, I can't even shoot right now. Like they've closed the <laughs> rounds in New York. So I can't even get a jump shot up right now. Yeah. Uh, so, like, how are players – how are you keeping people engaged when the prep is a little harder to do right now? Uh, you mean on the player side? Yeah. Or your side, too. Like, the, you mentioned recruiting is harder because it's hard to get people to even travel because, I mean, <laughs> it's are down. So, like, how do, you, how do you deal with that? Well, uh, on the recruiting side, like, for the people that are interested, really, it's just letting them know, like, it's – TBT is different than the NBA, the MLB, right? There are huge leagues that have a bunch of operations and logistical challenges – Versus the TBT that, you know, they can do that in, you know, a couple of weeks and, and run the whole tournament off that. Uh, so you don't have those types of opt obstacles there. Um, in terms of players getting in their work, like, I wish I could help. I don't have access to a gym or anything like that. Um, to want to stay, stay, uh, stay faithful to the stay at home orders. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, in terms of that, that's it. I, I've got a couple DMs back of just players or prospects being like have you heard of the coronavirus <laughs> uh you know it makes me want to be sarcastic back and be be <laughs> smart about it but gotta be nice kill them with kindness so yep. that's what it is no you got it so um you guys are looking to go to the las vegas region and obviously that's a, a local play for you um yep. you know being close to home where you guys are to be able to get players there and recruiting regional and uh me, me and uh, hainer have a little bit of a different um outlook on your squad right now he's got you as a bubble team and, and i'm saying there's no way you leave kim chi with even the first four guys that <laughs> on that this is the first the time here in this oh, what the hell man okay this is the first no, time no, here in this no, no hater 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 we'll, we'll we'll stop on you for a second charge go ahead finish yeah, your, yeah. Finish so, your so question just, Kind of uh, previewing that Vegas regional. I mean, and, and, and Hayner's right. There, there's some good teams out there. You know, a Team Challenge ALS. I mean, they're, yep. they're, this may be the best team they ever put together. Team Washington looks Oh, amazing. Team Washington's yeah. spicy. Spicy. Team. I mean, some good squads. So, so where, where do you see your, yourself fitting in here? I mean, um, are, are you, you, do you guys feel like you're on the bubble and you really need to use these last roster spots to, to make a splash? Or are you pretty comfortable with uh, um, the team and the relationships you have? Good question, man. Good question. Uh, Hayner, you got anything to add uh, before I answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think you guys will be fine. Go ahead. I'll follow up in a minute. You hit it, Daniel. Well, yeah, I, I think uh, right now, like, uh, yeah, it's interesting. There's there's a bunch of teams that are usually on the West Coast that have not showed themselves. So we're waiting for that, really. Um, there's quality teams out there like Colorado. I don't know if Fredette's running it back. I don't know if you guys know that, but um, no clue. No clue what's happening there. But I know that Vegas is going to be a huge, huge region in just terms of competition-wise, in terms of getting in. And then also within the region, just when you play out, it's it's going to be it's going to be big. Um, I get the question all the time from people, from my friends, from people that are involved. Uh, I've told them from day one, man, I fully guarantee that we're going to be in. Uh, I'm, I'm making it a case for ourselves, even from day one, right? Like we, we've got, uh, the work and the power and just doing what we can do to control our destiny really, um, is what we want to do. And that's what we've done from voting. Um, and so you know, I'm, I'm going to try to situate it as much as possible 
and get us to a team that's really irresistible. Um, not even on the player side, but just having a fan base, right? Um, and just a content, just content-wise, just everything packaged together, really. It's going to make Kimchi Express irresistible to get into the TBT. And we'll be, we'll be a fan favorite, man. We come in with all the energy. We actually come in and, and we, make, we, make, we make some noise. So we're, we're ready for this year, man. It's going to be different. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I don't know how much doubt you guys will make it. We were just talking about sort of more seeding. I mean, because look at the roster. I mean, you guys have a good roster, but look at the teams out there. And I'm not yeah. at all convinced you're not just going to Vegas to actually party. I'm not at all convinced that's not why you <laughs> But look, I mean, just seriously. So, like, you guys are definitely a strong contender because you are fan favorites. You've got a good roster, but, like, ALS, Washington, Showtime with the popcorn, Fort Wayne Champs with seven wins, Peoria with three, Hoopsville with five. That's six teams already. Plus, you've got the Ronin out of West Coast. City of Angels, and Doba in New Mexico. We already have 12, including you guys, 12 quality teams looking at Vegas. The regions are a little bit odd right now because, like, Vegas seems chock full. So when I say bubble, it's not just like, it's kimchi's for real with the fan base and the team. But, like, how do you see that region just mixing out just such a high quality of teams? There, Yeah, there is a quality. I don't want to go team by team and give you my breakdown. Um, we could do that offline, but – uh, you know, we've, we've got some stuff in store, man. Uh, some players uh, that, we're, that we're really soaring through. We're trying to figure out a roster. Obviously, we only got, you know, four players that are on the site right now. But, you know, we're in talks with some of these players and um, really trying to get them on board. And, and uh, that's, that's all I can say right now. Really, I think right from what I can say that's on the roster when you got Marquise Coleman – who's the second leading scorer in Portugal this past season. You got Will Davis, a consistent force in TBT, right? Trey Davis, who just can go off, certified bucket getter, certified by charge himself. And you've got Jordan Loveridge, man. He's just a, a great stretch for, he, you need him on every team that you have. Um, these are consistent dudes and we need consistent people, right? And um, in, in TBT, anything can happen. Obviously you guys know it's single elimination. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, even just looking at it with our, first four players you match them with four of the best players on every every other team I think we're still in the top eight for sure that's that's just my thing yeah no I mean it, I mean it's going to be a loaded region so we definitely are looking forward to kimchi making some real noise this year I mean maybe we can get a big enough lead where you get in and get some more buckets obviously maybe you get up 30 and you start cracking some shots I might I might need to start out the game throw out some energy <laughs> in there throw a couple threes up there yeah it makes sense that makes sense Real quick, though, we talk about teams playing for themselves, playing for a charity, playing for an alumni base. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about Liberty in North Korea? Because I think, is this the first time Kim Chi's played for an actual cause? Can you talk a little bit about what led you to play for this specific cause? Yeah, no, no, it definitely is. Um, you know, part of what we wanted to do for this year as well is, is partner up with someone that's bigger than basketball, right? Um, as we know, basketball is secondary to a lot of things in the world, and like we are with Kimchi Express and, and sharing Korean culture and bringing awareness to Korean culture. We also wanted to loop in, you know, Liberty North Korea, a great partner of ours. And what's happening in North Korea? I think a lot of misconceptions go on with um, a lot of news that people consume and it's not anyone's fault, but it's really just, it's, it's a lot of political things, right? And that's, that's how it's conveyed. And, you know, there are real people there, there are fellow Koreans that are out there that, that are struggling, right? Um, you know, we, we can't understand what they're going through, but just providing some awareness. And I think Liberty in North Korea does a great job in doing that. Um, so I encourage everyone to get on their site um, and check it out and check out some videos and see some awesome things that they're doing. Um, but yeah, it's important for us to play something, play for something that's bigger than basketball, because, you know, that's what I believe too, right? It's, it's, it's more than sports. Like I said earlier, it's, you know, this is, this is an avenue where, you know, me, you know, Hayner and Charge can all get on a Zoom call. Like, this would never have happened if it weren't for sport, right? And so that's the beauty of it, and that's why I love sport, and that's why, you know, it's awesome, man. All right, excellent. So let's talk a little bit um, about your favorite memory from the TBT. Um, obviously, you, you, you played, you're GMing, and, um, you know, what stands out for you, whether it's your team personally or something you observed? Uh, stands out, yeah. I mean, I, pretty obvious. The first, first win, first win. Kimchi Express history, TBT. Uh, it was great, man. Like, 
that I remember vividly uh, was Kimchi Express, Kimchi Express against Du Bois Dream. Hopefully they come back for another year in TBT. They're great guys out there, great organization as well. Uh, but yeah, man, just getting that first win under our belt and just proving to ourselves that, you know, we can recruit a roster, we can get people out there. And, you know, these are genuine relationships that we're building as well with players that I've never had contact with before. But like I said, through sport, through TBT, this is all happening, right? Um, and, and yeah, it was fun, man. R right when uh, Byron Wesley, he, he hit the game-winning Elon Mender um, on a free throw, unfortunately. But, you know, what? it is what it is. We won the game. We won the game, man. It was the first uh, – what was it? The first 100-plus point Elon Mending. We've got a lot of records here at Kimchi Express, so I can't keep track. But um, – <laughs> Yeah, that, that's 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 what it was. We celebrated. We had fun. Um, man, TBT to you guys. Uh, we had what was it? It was a Friday night game. I don't know if it was seven o'clock or eight o'clock, something like that. And then they scheduled us Saturday morning first game. Uh, How does that happen, man? Are they trying to kick us down. out? They're trying to keep you down. Yeah, Come man. On, man. Man's, trying to, man's trying to keep you down. Say, yeah. Real quick, one last thing, Daniel. Like a lot of news right now, you guys are doing the North Korean. You're trying to help out there. Yep. Kim Jong Un, upright or not? <laughs> like, where are we at with this? What do you think? What's the betting man's take there? Betting man's take? I mean, I cannot go on the record and say anything and claim anything. Don't please don't put me in that position. But out of experience and out of everything I know about North Korea, you cannot believe anything you see that's on the table until it's factual right stick to the facts we're not about fake news here uh but yeah yeah that's uh can't speak to that really much uh, i'll leave it over to uh liberty north korea so check out their site great great organization great partner so go bother them about it um i'm not the guy for that all right well hey daniel uh this is probably a good spot to close we really appreciate you uh jumping on i mean you've had an incredible journey uh through the tbt and the kimchi express and and just you know real fascinating uh you know from you know your culture and, and the awareness that you're trying to bring so it's it's uh i know i'm all aboard the uh, kimchi express again for 2020 so thanks again so, for jumping on i appreciate you i appreciate you guys too hayner don't doubt us man Hey, I got you. Don't I got, got us, man. I'm I got serious. you. Daniel Chun, <laughs> GM Kenji Express. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, guys.